today to be your MC for this incredible event. Um, like many Utahns, I look back on the 2002 games with much pride and nostalgia. For three wonderful weeks, our community played host to the world, and I love that we have the world is welcome here as, our, uh, as, as a sign today and paying homage to the theme of the Olympics in 2002. Um, as a, as, a, as a young woman, I love seeing the images of our beautiful mountains and valleys displayed on NBC. Remember, this was before streaming, so we watched all of these events live. And yes, it was Utah's coming out party, as I've heard so many times. Um, but I also am just reminded, as I was thinking about today and the significance of, of the arch and having this installed here at Salt Lake City International Airport, um, how glorious those weeks were, were and how needed they were by the world. Um, if you remember, Utah and the Salt Lake City Games were pulled off a mere few months after the September 11th attack and tragedy. And those games would have been our chance in any event to shine under the best of circumstances. But under the circumstances we had, it was not only our chance to shine, but also to unify and imbue hope in a world that really needed it. And for me, that is one of the things that is such a source of pride for myself and I know for so many others in this community. Um, there were some incredible athletes at the games, and you'll get to hear from a couple of, of, of our athletes later today. Um, but I also have to disclose that I was of an age where the Medals Plaza party and celebration was maybe just as fun as watching some of the athletic events. And so seeing the arch here is really cool. Who remembers when the Canadian band, the Bare Naked Ladies, came out in the, uh, in the, one, in the speed suits? Now that was just like so memorable. And so seeing the arch again displayed here is, just brings back a lot of really fun and positive memories for me. Um, so again, as I've said, it is truly an honor to be here today. Uh, but let's fast forward from 2002 to 2012 when our city was preparing another massive undertaking. And that was when the Salt Lake City Department of Airports was planning to build our beautiful new airport. Uh, we really, uh, and I, I, I credit Nancy and Bill and airport directors uh, before Bill, uh, in their engagement with the public. And they did a lot of survey work asking what our community wanted to see and experience in the new airport. And in addition to hearing things like keeping the rental cars on sites and having more opportunities to plug in electronics, they also asked us to highlight the beauty of Utah. And I'll remind you that 40% of passengers who are connecting uh, never set foot outside of the airport. And so uh, we're, we're joined today by our artist, Gordon Huther, and are just delighted at what he has done inside the airport to showcase the beauty of our state. Uh, the canyon, the falls, and next year the river tunnel and the northern lights. And uh, stay tuned for a future unveiling of another massive installation outside the airport as, wo as well. But um, as we are thinking about those 60% of passengers who leave the airport, um, reinstalling the Hoberman Arch at this location, as visitors are arriving for the first time to this city, it's such a continuation of the airport's efforts to tout the beauty of our region and to honor our history. Um, and it is a tradition for airports to have entry and exit features, and our team has been discussing what this looks like. So when the opportunity arose to pay homage to our Olympic legacy by reinstalling the arch, we jumped at that chance. Now, a lot of work has gone into restoring the arch to its former uh, majesty, and I would also like to thank everyone who played an important role in getting us to this point today. Um, so again, we have a wonderful program set up. Uh, the mayor will follow me uh, with, with some remarks and, and, and an exciting unveiling. And then you'll hear from Derek Para, Chris Waddell, Fraser Bullock, and Gordon Huther. So with that, I'd like to turn the time over to an amazing mayor, an incredible leader, someone who has prioritized public art, who has honored the Utah and the Salt Lake City Olympic legacy, and who wants to build on it and make it even more inclusive when we bring the games back. And that is Mayor Aaron Mendenhall. So thank you, Mayor. This is the dustiest Olympic fan party I've ever been to. Um, but I want to just give a shout out to our Olympic hero, Spence Eccles. Thank you for joining us here today, Spence. Also, a bunch of city council members are here. Council member Petro, council member Poi, council chair Mono. And if there's any others in the back, thank you for joining us here. Uh, we can't forget the Hoberman Arch. It's the tattoo that the whale has become in Salt Lake City. 
the whale is now in competition because the real symbol of Salt Lake City welcoming the world is right behind us and in a permanent location as it should be to welcome the world again and again. It deserves to be displayed. It's part of our legacy, it's part of our identity, and it's part of our passion for being an Olympic city. For anybody who's young or new to Salt Lake City, Hoberman Arch was designed by an artist, engineer, and architect named Chuck Hoberman. And he was inspired by our state's natural arches, like Delicate Arch. And he had designed this piece specifically for the Olympic Medals Plaza, where all of the medals were awarded some to uh, Olympians who are with us here today. There are more than 4,000 individual pieces that make up the Hoberman Arch. And after two decades of being forgotten, there were a lot of broken parts. There were missing parts. And it took an amazing team led by Gordon Huther, our, our, our artist for all of the Salt Lake City Airport and his team, but also in collaboration with Chuck Huber, um, rather Chuck Hoberman, excuse me, and Salt Lake City employees. A lot of thanks to you, Gordon. I'm looking forward to hear, hearing from you in a moment, but this is a lasting part of our airport artist legacy and an opening, I think, a lens literally through which we can envision our future of hoping to host winter games here in Salt Lake City. Um, I have a message from Chuck Hoberman who couldn't join us here today, but I'm going to share his message with you. Making the Hoberman Arch for the 2002 Winter Games was one of the true high points of my life. My aspiration was to create something never seen before that through structure and mechanics would exemplify the beauty and athleticism of the Olympic con contestants themselves. I worked with an extraordinary team, designers, engineers, fabricators, theater people, to mount a live performance dedicated to the residents of Salt Lake City. During that time, I felt like a part of your wonderful community. And now, over 20 years later, all my thanks to Salt Lake City for bringing the arch back to where it belongs. So now, without further ado, let's see what's behind this curtain. Drop that curtain. old. But I want to make sure that you take note that there is room on this for an additional year or other years to be added to this sign. And with that, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, my friend and two-time Olympic medalist who stood in front of this very beautiful piece of art to receive both gold and silver medals in speed skating in 2002 games. Please help me welcome my friend Derek Para. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Oh, wow. Um, it still brings back memories, you know, over 20 years later. Uh, before I say anything, I want to thank everyone involved with bringing this arch back to life, uh, everybody at the City of Salt Lake as well as the uh, board of the Salt Lake City International Airport. Uh, this piece of art was, is pretty impactful to me because it is so symbolic of not only my journey to the games but also just my life today. There are so many moving parts to this arch that have to work together in order to have success and move forward or to present this beautiful, this beautiful image here. And I remember being on the podium in 2002 and, uh, and thinking that, because it was not, if you ask any Olympians, there's some Olympians here today. Uh, Catherine Rennie Norman is here, as well as Chris Waddell, uh, Eric, I'm sorry, Chris Metzer is here. Who else did I see here earlier today? Monty Myers here. Uh, we, I think we all have such great memories in our, in our minds and our hearts from the, that, that period of time in our own Olympic Games. And uh, I'd, I'd like to share with you uh, my moment on the podium, if I would. Uh, for those of you who've heard it before, please bear with me. But uh, I think it does, it does really 
pulled together the impact of what something like this being in my city now where I chose to live and spend the rest of my life. Uh, and hopefully we'll have people who are visitors coming to see us and hopefully they can take pictures with the, with behind the, uh, in front of the ark. But I remember being uh, at the rewards plaza. It was an cr- incredibly hectic day. I think I won my medal about 2.30 in the afternoon and it wasn't until about 7.30 p.m. that night that I received the medal. And in between it was absolutely chaos between you know, drug testing and um, the media, media press conferences and, and, and whatnot. And we finally came to the, to the, to the plaza, or the awards plaza, and I remember being behind a curtain just behind stage, and they opened it up, and we walked out, me and the other two athletes who had won medals in that distance came out. And uh, I remember seeing this, this sea of people in this amphithe- amphitheater-like stadium. And before I knew it, um, the national anthem was being played. And I remember putting my hand over my heart and um, started singing the national anthem. And at the same time, someone in the front of the stadium started to sing as well. And as the anthem went on, and I kept seeing the American flag being raised, it's a little bit higher than the other two flags, that, that singing of the national anthem began to spread throughout the crowd. So if you can imagine the stadium, and all of a sudden, like a, like a wave, you could see the mouths of everybody in that stadium moving in unison, singing the American national anthem. They, weren't, they were from, from the United States. They were from different countries, from Italy, from France. And you could, I could see that in my peripheral vision, and I could feel the volume of their voice on my chest. And it was at that moment that I blinked my eyes for just a second, and I saw all the faces of the people who helped me get to that podium. The 18 years that it took me to get there from when I was 14 years old, putting on a pair of roller skates in a, in a summer sport, and I traveled through the, across the country to every community uh, with different friends and, and new family members that I would bring into my circle, who all saw that I had a dream and for some reason stepped on my path to help me move forward when I couldn't. And I was there with them on top of that podium that night. Um, and it was an incredible moment for me. And I think this arch is so symbolic of that, of the, what it takes to be successful in anything we do in life, from the building of this airport to our communities to the sports that we still run and the Olympic spirit that still lives here in Salt Lake City. And I'm very fortunate now to be a part of someone else's journey. I'm, I'm the director of sport at the Utah Olympic uh, Oval, which is part of our Utah Olympic Legacy Foundation. And I have the privilege of, of seeing these, this next generation of skaters and, and athletes coming up in all of our venues and living their own Olympic dreams. I was very fortunate to, to witness uh, Jerrica Tanneman, our first homegrown speed skater, uh, make Olympi- be an Olympian in 2014 in Sochi. I remember seeing her as a six-year-old kid coming in after the game, so inspired by the Olympics and what she saw on TV and developed her own passion in the sport of speed skating and, and made her way to, to uh, Sochi. And even this past games in, in Beijing, uh, one of our own Park City natives, Casey Dawson, who uh, we had the privilege enough to, to coach along with Catherine Rennie Norman, who joined this Park City club and eventually came to the Oval in our, in our speed skating pipeline and then went to Beijing and won a bronze medal in a men's team pursuit. She's just incredible dreams and incredible stories that are, are lived every day. And, and now to know that we, we may get another games here and have another generation of youth and, and just family members here in this city and around the country look to Salt Lake with open arms and open eyes as we welcome the world back, hopefully in a few years, uh, to, to ignite some more Olympic dreams and aspirations. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it on to... Uh, an Olympian, a friend of mine, who needs an introduction. He, he knows the podium very, very well in his career. So please welcome uh, Chris Waddell. Thank you, Derek. And it, for, us as par- for, for us as Paralympians, it was amazing to be able to watch you and then be able to follow you and try to follow in your footsteps. I've got to give you one name before I start. Ragan Heald Micklebist. The last time I was in front of the Hoberman Arch was at the closing ceremonies for the Paralympics in 2002. And what do I remember from those games? Well, one, I remember Patti LaBelle being on stage and she passed the microphone into the audience. And Willie Stewart, cross country skier, who is affectionately known and self-identifies as one-armed Willie, took the microphone and did some freestyle rap that left everybody absolutely amazed. And then he passed it off to Lacey Heward, who broke out this scat, who had the, the 
what is it, the queen or the, uh, no, the, the godmother of soul worried that she was going to get upstaged by this mono skiing Paralympian. And for me, I was in front of the whole group, and the teleprompter came up, and there were so many letters and so many syllables that I totally froze in trying to get out the name of the winningest Paralympian out there, Ragan Heald Mickelbist, win winningest winter Paralympian. But it was so much more than that, too. It was the buildup to the games. It was a rainy, not rainy, it was a misty, dark night at Rice Eccles Stadium that was completely full of people. And I'd seen that in the summer games, but I hadn't seen it in the winter games. The snow at Snow Basin, it was a bluebird day, and the stands were completely packed for the downhill. I had never, ever seen that. The last night I went to the hockey game, the sled hockey game, our team, the U.S. team, would not have been in the tournament if we hadn't been the host. They were playing for the gold medal that night, and as I went to the door, people were trying to buy tickets in the parking lot to get to the gold medal game of the Paralympics. To me, what an amazing thing that people could potentially be shut out of the Paralympics if they didn't prepare well enough. We'd gone from obscurity, and we'd built much that afterwards so many people said to me, if the games ever come back, which they will, I will never miss the Paralympics. And that to me was our journey. So thank you and looking forward to a continued. I'm going to pass this off to our illustrious CEO of the Committee for the Games, Fraser Bullock. Oh boy, Chris, you're so inspirational. I mean, what a dear friend he has become. And Derek, you're my hero in so many ways. And um, I just need to do a shout out to our mayor. Um, she is a strategic advisor to us, a supportive advisor to us. And just so you know, she has presented many times and had interactions many times with the International Olympic Committee and the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee. And they adore her. She is a very important asset in our bid, and we're so grateful for everything that she has done. I believe the Hoberman Arch has found its perfect home. It will get millions of views of people from our own community passing by, guests from around the world to see this great symbol. It is a symbol to help us remember that the people of Utah hosted one of the greatest games in history. And it's also a symbol of the hope of a future games in the not too distant future. <laughs> okay, there we go. So as we come by this great symbol, we all drop off people at the airport or travel. We can remember the past, we can look forward to the future, but we can also do something today. And that is to embrace the Olympic and Paralympic values. And I just want to highlight one of those. And I would ask Spence Eccles, if you'll come up here for a moment. Yeah, watch those rocks there. <laughs> Spence, if you'll come over here. 
So I, I view Spence in a way as the father of the Olympic Games here in Utah, right? And when I look at the Olympic and Paralympic values, he embodies them. And you can go and read all, there are seven of them, but one in particular stands out, and I think he's an example to all of us that we can do in our communities today, and that is friendship. There's too much division and other things going on. Everybody can be our friend, no matter what background, political persuasion, whatever. Everybody can be a friend, and I think everybody is Spence's friend. And so when I look at him, I feel that example. So Spence, thank you for that example. Thank you for your undying support. And the Hoberman Arch here is a symbol that reminds us of you, and it reminds us of the games, and it reminds us of the values that we can all aspire to. So thank you, Spence. And I'll be, uh, I'll be 194, so let's get the games in 90. <laughs> OK. OK. Thank you, Spence. So now I'd like to turn it over to Gordon Huther, who has created this incredible airport. And every time I go through it, it just makes my heart soar. And here we got even another addition. So Gordon. Hello, everybody. Uh, just to be clear, I did not create the airport. Uh, <clears throat> but I like to think that um, myself with my team have made important creative contributions to it. And um, it's been oh, about eight years now. And we got a couple more years to go. So stay tuned for some more good stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a tough act to follow with these folks up here. I'm not really quite sure why I'm up here, except that my team, we, well, let me, let me do it like this. Remember the, um, the nursery rhyme, Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Hoberman back together again. But the king's horses and the king's men is a metaphor for this community. The mayor's office, the Olympians, the, the airport, the community at large. Um, what a commitment to make something like this happen. And you, you guys already know a lot of the history of the arch, where, where it was and why it was originally. Then it moved to the university. Then it got disassembled and chopped up a little bit, um, wound up in a fenced yard somewhere. People started stealing pieces of it. You just got to imagine someone going down the street with a shopping cart with one of those pieces on the way to the recycling center. I don't know where they all went. And then it got locked up in a secret location downtown inside a locked building. And the first time I went there to see what was up, I thought, oh boy, what am I getting myself into? There were buckets and buckets of bolts. Those, all those guys stacked. Not, nothing was really in order. Nothing was numbered. Somebody had chopped right through a major structural member so that you can't use it anymore. Um, so it was quite a feat, and so, it, and I, I didn't do it by myself. I mean, I have an incredible team that includes a lot of you that are here. The other thing that was super important is getting it at the right location. This is a huge, huge property. Where can you maximize the visual impact for the millions of people that are going to be coming right here by it? And it, now that it's there, it looks like it's pretty logical, but we had so many sites to choose from. Lots of driving around, lots of driving around, figuring it out. Anyways, this is an icon. We all recognize this is an icon, a tattoo, if you like, since tattoos are so popular. I had to have mine removed. Uh, but um, it's an incredible icon, and it's of the highest possible quality, and it should last generations. And as our beloved mayor shared, we got room for 2031 and 2034, so let's make, make that happen. And um, I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to be part of this um, airport community, this community at large. Um, and I, lastly, I wanted to share with you that we have a little takeaway memento for each of you. 
sitting over at that tent, so be sure and go by and take that with you. And thank you again. God bless you. Well, thank you, Gordon, and thanks to each of our speakers. Um, as we conclude, I want to thank our airport team here for putting together such an amazing event, Nancy and others who always put together uh, incredible events, first-class events that, uh, that inspire our community. And just as I was sitting here thinking about the story of the arch and it sort of falling into disrepair, being broken up, it reminded that as a community, just like the arch, we are greater than the sum of our parts when we come together with a shared vision. And that was to build this wonderful airport, to welcome the world here, to host the, the Olympic and Paralympic Games, and, and to honor that legacy and to look forward to do it again, as, as Fraser said. So thank you again, and uh, look forward to seeing you at the next wonderful airport event.